why couldn't we? Bakit hindi namin magawa? Bakit hindi namin makaya? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your continuing fellowship with us. Salamat Panginoon na bagamat kami ganito lamang, lagi nagkukulang sa iyo, pero hindi ka nagkukulang sa amin. We are very grateful, O oh Lord, that you live in us, that nothing can separate us from the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Right now, as we ponder your word, we ask for wisdom, that this wisdom may come directly from your throne of grace, so that we may have the keys to unlock your mysterious and beautiful and powerful word. Sa aming pagtitipon, Panginoon, silayan mo nga nawa kami at bigyan mo kami, Panginoon, ng kakayahan na makita kung ano ang nais mong matutunan namin sa sandaling ito. Take over, O Father, be the speaker. We came to hear no other person but you. Speak in power and majesty. Let your will be done. Accomplish your purpose in our lives. We seek you confidently in Jesus' mighty name. Let us turn our Bibles to Matthew 17, verses 14 up to 21. Matthew 17, 14 to 21. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. O unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. And may the Lord add a lot of blessing to the reading of His Holy Word. Ito pong isang kasaysayan na ito is a classic. Nearly all of us already know this. And let's pray that the Lord will give us fresh uh, applications. So, ang storya umikot sa isang trabaho. Let's take a look at the work. Let's take a look at the workers, and let's take a look at the workers' source of power. So the work was that of healing a gravely tortured boy. Apparently, there was a spirit in him. Kaya nakakaroon siya ng seizures. Kala siguro iba, epileptic, whatever. He would fall on such, what? Wrong places. He would fall into fires. Alam nyo, lalo nung araw sa Middle East, maraming mga hukay, mga pits, mga balon-balon. Doon nilisinisigan yung mga basura. Uh, there was one big place there na parang laging nagiging picture ng Jehenna. But uh, nearly every place would have such, uh, such pits for fires. And he would fall into them or he would fall into waters. Kasi meron din naman ng mga, mga balloon, merong mga cisterns, merong mga kinukuha na ng tubig. He would fall in wrong places and it's no little discomfort. It was a great torture to be falling into such places. And he was suffering greatly. And of course, when a child suffers, the parents suffer probably twice over. So the parent, the father particularly, brought the boy to the disciples. Ang isagot mga disciples ni Cristo, eh, talaga namang high-sounding ang mga theology nila. Lagi silang kasama, so dalhin natin. So that was the work, healing a gravely tortured boy, delivering him from the clutches of the evil one and delivering him from all the works of evil. And let's take a look at the workers, the disciples. Apparently, they were powerless. Walang mangyari. Kahit ano siguro sabihin nila ng mga words, kahit ano sabihin nila ng mga dasal-dasal. So, when the boy was brought to them, they could not heal him. So, anong siyempre, tama naman ang ginawa ng tatay. The father worked his way up the ladder and he got to the workers' source of power. There was the work, there was the worker, but there was the worker's source of power. So they went to Jesus. Sabi din nila na po namin ito eh, sa inyong mga tagasunod, sa inyong mga alagad, pero walang mangyari. Ito ang bata, patuloy na nagkakagani-ganito. So, what did the Lord do in verse 18? He rebuked the demon. Pinaalis niya. Dapat rebukein yun kasi he's in the wrong place. 
Ang mga tao, kinrate ng God for God's glory, hindi para tirhan ng mga masasamang espiritu. And when confronted with the truth, the demons have no recourse but to leave. The truth is always powerful. Kaya dapat alam natin yung truth. The truth is powerful. So Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Bigla, instantaneously, he was healed. So nakita natin that the worker's source of power was Jesus. And faith. Faith in Jesus, faith in God. Siyempre, medyo napahiya siguro yung mga disciples dahil kung ano-anong ginawa nila, ministrations, hindi naman gumagaling yung kanilang ipinagdarasal, ipinapaalis nila yung Espiritu. In fact, there was even an instance na yung nagpapaalis ang nilipatan ng Espiritu. Eh. There was an instance when a, a person was possessed, sabi ng tao, in the name of Jesus and the Apostles, leave. Sabi ng Espiritu, Jesus and the Apostles, I know, but you, I don't know you. Sa kanya lumipat. Hindi naman kasi ganun kadali yun eh. But let's take a look at this. The worker's source of power is Jesus and faith in Jesus or faith in God. So, nung matapos pinagaling ang bata, ang mga disciples secretly went to Jesus. In private, sabi nila, bakit hindi kami nag-click? What was wrong? Ganon din naman eh. Pinapaalis din namin. But hindi naging effective kami. As sabi ni Lord, because you have so little faith. Sinasabi lang ng bibig nyo, leave. Pero siguro sa puso nyo, nagdududa kayo kung aalis nga. Sinasabi nyo, in the name of Jesus, live. Pero siguro sa puso nyo, hindi naman talaga kayo naniniwala ng ganap sa akin. You are only going through the motions. Di po ba maraming beses sa buhay natin nangyayari yan? We go through the motions, pero hindi naman talaga tayo naniniwala. Marami pumupunta sa church, pero hindi naman talaga naniniwala sa church. Dahil kung naniniwala, edi dapat sumusunod. Edi dapat nagpapasubmit. Edi dapat naglilingkod. So para lang habit, pumupunta lang sa church, pero wala naman talagang faith in the church as an institution. Wala naman faith talaga sa sinasabi ng church to the point. Kasi kung meron tayong faith, edi susunod. Because if there's faith, there's works. Kasunod yon. So alam natin, wala naman talagang faith dahil walang work eh. So ganun din yon. Yung mga disciples, they were going through the motions, pero wala naman doon yung puso. So tulad ng disciples, walang effect, walang power. Marami rin Christians today, ganun. Wala naman talagang power. Lagi pa nga natatalo pag may temptation. Natatakot pa nga sa multo yung iba. Imbes yung multo ang matakot, ay eto na yung Christian, baka tayo paalisin. Yung pang Christiano natatakot. So, nababaligtad. So, katulad din nila, marami pa rin ngayon ganon. Disciples pa kunwari, o pastor, o deacon, o leader, o deaconess, pero walang power. Christians are people of power. Without the power, there is a great thing missing. Kasi di ba the church is triumphant, victorious, conquering church, pero yung ba talaga ang nangyayari? Most of the time, the church is apologetic. Sometimes apologetic for its own being. Walang power. At ang dahilan, sa nabi ni Lord, because you have so little faith. Faith can move mountains. Of course, hindi natin alam kung literal nga ba ang gusto sabihin ni Lord na sabihin mo sa mountain, buhatin mo sa sarili mo itapon mo sa dagat. Pero ang sinasabi niya, mas mabuti nga kung hindi lang yung literal, kundi talagang symbolic. It means nothing is impossible to those who believe. And that's what he said. Faith makes the impossible possible. Without faith, even the possible becomes impossible. Pag merong faith, yung imposible nagiging posible. Pero pag wala ngang faith, yung posible na eh. Nagiging imposible pa eh. Yung madali na, humihirap pa eh. Kasi walang faith. So, that was the story then. What about us now? What's the point in knowing these stories kung walang connection sa atin? What's the story now? What's the work today? It's the same. Healing people. That's the work of Jesus today. That's the work of the church today. To heal people. Kasi wala naman kayong wound, wala kayong brokenness, you don't need the church. Pero meron bang tao na walang brokenness? Na walang wound? Na walang pain? Walang frustration? Walang sorrow? Kaya nga may church. So the work goes on. Healing all of us. We have seizures. Like that boy, we fall into wrong places. 
Yung iba nga hindi pa nagpo-fall into wrong places, they intentionally go to wrong places. So we fall into fires, we fall into water. This is the beauty of biblical stories, kaya alam natin, divinely written. It's a story, it's a phenomenon, but it can get out of its frame and become universal and become true. You look at your cell, you look at your uh, parts of your body, you look at society, you look at the planet, you look at humanity, and the story is also there. It's very true, it's very universal, it's written everywhere. People are falling into fires and water even now. So we suffer greatly. Diba? The world is suffering. The entertainment industry is one of the greatest industries on earth because people need to be entertained because they are sad. Sadness, loneliness is an epidemic probably more prevalent than the common cold. People suffer. Broken lives, broken homes, broken promises, frustrations with self, with parent, with spouse, with offspring, with friend, frustration with the planet and with everything. We are all suffering. So that's the work. The work of God continues to heal those who are suffering. Let's take a look at the worker. And the worker, brother and sister, that's you and me. Those who have Christ in their hearts, we are the workers. But is there power? Is there power in the way the church moves today? Is there power in the way Christians move today? Apparently, there's great powerlessness. Many people are brought to the church. They come in, they go out the same. Or sometimes worse. Of course, there are some isolated stories that they go in and then go out better. Pero pag matagal ka na sa church, alalaman mo, ay, ganito pala to. Ganon din pala. May mga intrigue din pala dito. Gulo-gulo rin pala. Kala ko, paradise. So nakikita natin, there's powerlessness. People are brought to us, but are we able to really minister to them? Nakaka-minister ba talaga yung church? Oh, people in the church are so busy and obsessed with their own aches and pains and sorrows that they have no more compassion for the person next to them. Inisip ko lang, ako, ako, ako. Meron ako need. Hindi niya ako nginitian. Nagagalit ako sa kanya. Pero baka naman yung dala niyang problema, mas malaki sa dala ko. Kaya pala hindi na niya makuha ng umiti. But many people, when they come to church, they expect na to be pampered and to be, you know, alagaan, babyhin siya. Marami ba sa atin nag-iisip, ano sino kayo maalagaan ko dito? Most of the time, when people come to church, kahit mga Christians, they say, oh, eto na ako, minister to me, kantahan nyo na ako, turuan nyo na ako, hmm. tapatan na ako ng aircon dito, or what? Like, we want to be ministered to. But, walang power. Kung powerful ba naman yung church, dapat churches are growing by leaps and bounds, including ours. There's very little power. At yun ang isa sa mga pinakamalaking dapat ma-realize nating lahat. Siguro less than 3% ng power available to the church ang ginagamit niya. So, yung mga dating may kagalit, kagalit pa rin hanggang ngayon, dumami pa nga lalo nung naging member ng board. Yung mga dating nalulungkot o malungkot pa rin, na-isolate pa rin. Kaya, yung mga dating sakit nandyan pa rin. Yung bang mga, I feel bad about myself, gumagaling ba pag nasa church? O do I feel worse about myself? Because many Christians, like the disciples of old, are powerless. They are only going through the motions. O sige, ipagpe-pray kita. But do you believe in the prayers you say? O ipagpray natin ng Bosnia, ipagpray natin ng Afghanistan. But gulo-gulo pa rin doon. Naniniwala ba talaga tayo sa prayer natin? Do our prayers make a difference? Kaya kumisa nakakatamad na rin umatin ang dami-daming prayer meeting. Wala rin naman nangyayari. Naniniwala ba tayo sa ipinagpe-pray natin? Kasi kung naniniwala tayo, dapat natupad na yun nung pa. Kasi ang sabi ni Lord, ang faith mo kasi liit lang ng mustard seed. You know, I, I don't know how many of you have seen mustard seeds. Pero parang kasi laki lang ng pinhead. Yung ulo ng atpile. Yun lang halos. So, hindi naman siyempre ganun yung makasukatin nyo pa technically kung gano'n, one billion of an inch ba yun o ano. It's a figure of speech, meaning kahit ang liit ng faith mo, may malaki na mangyayari. So, pag biniligtad po natin, walang nangyayari. So, ano ibig sabihin? Walang faith. So, if the workers are powerless, and we have to begin from that, there are a few of us who probably enjoy God's power, but very few, and probably seasonal pa. Yung grand design of the Lord for the church is not happening. 
Yung invest ang church ang magset ng agenda ng mundo, invest na church ang magpauso sa mundo, ang church ang nakikiuso sa mundo. So it's you know, it's a slap on our face. It's a grand failure. And so, if you look at the work, you look at the worker, you've got to look at the worker's source of power. Then and now, it's still Jesus. Sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 28, 18, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Kaya kung meron tayong dapat i-please si Lord eh. Nakakapagtaka lang talaga. Ang dali-dali nating malibang, ang dali-dali nating malito, ang dali-dali nating mabulag, that we become men pleasers at the expense of our relationship with God. Many relationships with men are enhanced at the expense of relationships with God. Sa mata lang sabi, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. But because we get distracted and we believe in human authority, so ito yung may authority over me, makakabigay sa akin ng favor, makakabigay sa akin ng mga gusto ko, ipi-please ko siya, invest God. But when we please God, God, when He is pleased with us, can give us all the blessings. And blessing doesn't always mean coming in in boxes at yung gusto mo talaga. Sometimes by not giving you what you want, that's the blessing. Because many people get destroyed or they self-destruct when they get everything they want. So one of the great blessings of God is to withhold from us what we want and give us instead what we need. So buhay natin kung minsan nagre-reklamo tayo, hindi binibigay sa akin ni Lord, hindi hindi ito binibigay, reklamo, reklamo, reklamo. Yung pala dapat natin ipagpasalamat, yung pala pag ibinigay sa atin, destructive eh. Remember, God promised to give us what we need, not what we want. So the worker source of power is still Jesus up to now. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And as long as you're under that authority, and as long as you please that authority, you're in good graces. Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Of course, the context in which it was said is different from the context that we're using it now for. But the point is, we can do anything and everything through Christ who gives us strength. And what about our faith in Jesus? Sabi sa Mark 9.23, everything is possible for him who believes. Everything is possible for him who believes. So why can we not do many things? Siguro, lalapit din tayo kay Lord privately. Lord, why can't I do it? Why couldn't I do it? Bakit may pinapaalis akong demonyo, lalong dumami? Bakit pinipigil ko ang sarili ko, lalong hindi ko mapigil? Bakit may ipinagpe-pray ako, hindi nangyayari yung mga dapat ipag-pray? Isa pa rin siguro yung sagot. Because you have very little faith. What can we do? What can we do? What is faith? Faith is believing in God's power, but also faith is believing and moving in accordance with God's will. Hindi lang to believe in power and then to believe in power carelessly. That power must still be within the framework of God's will. Yung iba kasi super faith, lahat pinapaniwalaan. Sige, kung naniniwala ka nga na makiingatan ka ng Diyos, tumalun ka dyan. Tignan natin kung sasaluhin ka. That was the same temptation given to Jesus by the devil. Remember? The devil brought him to the highest pinnacle of the temple. Sa Jerusalem kasi, one side of the temple may valley eh. Ang lalim-lalim. Yung ibang side dito, hindi. Pero isang side, ang lalim-lalim. At dun sa wall na yon, sa side ng malalim, nandun yung tower na ang taas-taas. Dinala siya dun. Sabi ng devil, Sige nga, if you are the son of God, tumalon ka. Kasi sabi sa scripture eh, hindi daw pababayaan pati yung mga paamo na maggasgas ng mga bato. So, sasaluhin ka naman mga angels. So, tumalon ka na. But the Lord said, of course, something contrary to that and did not buy it. The point is, maraming mga exercises of power that are just uh, not godly, not within God's will. Kaya hindi tayo din nagpa-practice ng ganon. Pagka gusto natin, oh, according to God's will. Kasi meron eh, ipagpe-pray. Lord, we claim that the sick woman is going to get well. Thank you, Lord, for answering yes. Tapos biglang namatay. I know of a case. Kinlame na nila. Wala doon yung may sakit. Ipinag-pray. In the name of Jesus, we command you, spirit of sickness, to live. And we pronounce this woman uh, well. Thank you, Father. Palakpaka na. Pagkatapos namatay. 
we believe in power. We believe that God heals. But we also believe that it is God's will that people die. Kaya kailangan well-guided yun. Hindi claim ka ng claim. Ikiklaim mo in accordance with God's will. Kumisan kasi yung will natin, we want it to prevail over God's will because we have such a burning desire to achieve something. But that should always be submitted to God's dominion. Everything is possible for him who believes. And of course, sabi sa 1 John 5.14, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So may isang bagong dimension na pumapasok sa faith. We should know God's will so that you will know what to believe and what not to believe. Hindi puro ka lang emosyon, hindi puro ka lang nangisay ng isay dyan, dasal lang dasal, tirik ng tirik ang mata. Tapos wala naman palang alam ikaw sa scripture, kaya kung ano-ano pinaghihingi mo ng mga spectacular things na hindi naman gusto ng Diyos. So, how can we develop faith? That's important, di po ba? Siguro tatawin natin, oh sige, oh, kanina pa, sold na ako, given, kailangan ko ng faith. But the truth is, konti lang ang faith ko o wala. So what do I do? The Lord fed thousands of men, not to count men and women, with a few pieces of bread, five loaves, and just two or three fishes. Right? Pero kung wala yun, hindi naman magkakaroon ng ipifide. The Lord is not a magician. Hindi naman wala, tas point, meron marami. Merong something, igogrow niya yun. Kaya yung faith naman natin, we have a little of it. We can even ask God to increase it. In fact, the apostles asked for it in Luke 17.5. Sabi niya, Lord, increase our faith. In other words, we can pray for it. But how can we do our part? First of all, you've got to give God something to work on. Like, when the people at the wedding were asking whether they needed wine, the Lord said, Fill the jars with water. And as soon as the jars were filled with water, the Lord turned the water into wine. Hindi naman from nothing. Merong part tayo. So if we like the Lord to help us increase our faith, we've got to practice that faith. Meron tayo dapat part. And one of the most important things we can do to increase our faith, brothers and sisters, is to know what to believe in and what not to believe in. Therefore, we've got to know the Scripture. Otherwise, it becomes a very dangerous game when you have a lot of faith and you don't know what to believe in. Di ba ganyan nga yung mga na one, two, three? Naniwala. Pero hindi napili kung sino yung papaniwalaan o oh, anong nangyari. They were deceived. It's not enough that you believe. Believing is very important. But you've got to know and choose what you believe in. That's why you want your faith to grow? First, do what is humanly possible. Read the scriptures Know the scriptures, know the will of God, know the word of God, so that you will know what to believe in. And then probably you will be able to give God something to work on so that He can increase it, so that it become a great body of faith. First is to believe in God, to believe in His will, in His mind, in His thoughts, in what He can do. Tayo nga po mga Filipinos are gifted with a lot of faith. Eh? It's a strength and a weakness. Because we can believe anything. Pag may nagumpisa ng kulto na yung takip ng Coca-Cola ay makakapagpagaling, may maniniwala, hindi siya masizero. In this country, kahit anong ituro mo, hindi ka masizero. Kasi our people have a great capacity to believe anything. Kaya lalong dapat i-channel mo yun eh, towards the scripture. What can temper that? What can prevent abuses? What can protect people from mistakes? Knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of God's expressed will and applied will in Scripture. Kaya kung ang tanong po natin, o oh, sige, gusto ko, naniniwala na ako, kailangan ko ng faith, pero paano? Begin with something that you can participate in. Know the will of God. And then ask the Lord to bless it. So that you not only know that He heals, but you believe that He can heal you. So that you not only know that God can heal the wounds of our childhood but you believe that God can and you submit yourself to the ministrations of God and then we get healed ang dami na nating narinig na salita ng Diyos eh nasan yung talab nasan yung effect 
ang kulang na lang doon, faith. What can we do? Know God's will. Ask and operate according to that will. We've got to operate. How can we increase faith? Di ba, katulad natin, kung paniwalang-paniwala tayo sa isang doktor o sa isang engineer o sa isang practitioner, kasi na-experience na natin yung mga ministrations niya eh. Na-prove na natin siya. So, we should give God a chance to operate in our lives so that we have a point of reference, so that we will know that He really does what He says. There are many moments in life when you just have to let go and let God do the rest. Most of the time kasi we ask God to do something to intercede in our behalf and then halfway, we intercede again and interfere at tayo uli ang magre-rearrange nun. Hindi natin sinusunod. How many people are really able to see through a project or a certain phase of their life or struggle na talagang 100% sinunod lang nila yung gusto ng Diyos? There are moments when we like to interfere eh. Parang mali yata ang ginagawa ng Diyos, hindi yata dapat ganun. Parang dapat kong ibahin ang konti. Kaya tuloy, hindi natin napapatunayan if it will work or not. Like, gusto mong malaman kung sasaluhin ka nga ng Diyos, eh di tumalon ka. Kung hindi ka tatalon, hindi mo malalaman. Pero hindi ko kayo pinapatalon dito. Okay? Bahil, hindi siguro kayo sasaluhin. Dahil bakit naman kayo sasaluhin kung tumalon kayo? But the point is, in many parts of our lives, we have to take a step of faith. And there are moments when that step of faith probably goes against what we call common sense. But if you'll always just stick to your common sense, when it goes against godly sense, how will you ever prove that godly sense works? Hindi ko naman sinasabing huwag tayong magkaroon ng common sense. But the point is, when our common sense goes against what God says, and let's make sure that we have good hermeneutics na talagang this is what really God says, not what we think God says. Kasi maraming tao, they think this is what God says and teach it as what God says, but actually, they lack the necessary scholarship pala. Hindi naman pala talaga yun yung sabi. But granting that we have applied all sound uh, principles of hermeneutics and interpretation and studying of Scripture, alam natin yung God's will, maraming beses pa rin, hindi natin sinusunod. Sinusunod pa rin yung sarili. Isang common example na lang, Christians, alam na alam natin, ang sabi ni Lord, you should not be unequally yoked than believers. Tapos meron kang nobyo, meron kang nobyang unbelievers. Tapos sinusunod, sarili. Sabi, hindi ko kasi kaya mabuhay nang wala siya. Bakit hindi mo tanggalin siya at ang malaman mo mabubuhay ka? Paano mo mapapatunayan na bubuhayin ka nga ng Diyos? Ayaw mo naman siyang bigyan ng chance dahil bising-bisi ka na binubuhay mo na yung sarili mo. Hindi naman masamang buhay ng sarili, pero if it goes against God's will, subukan natin yung sa kanyang style, sa kanyang paraan. Like a recipe, how will you know that if it works kung hindi nyo sinunod? Siyempre, pagtapos na, tsaka mo manalalaman, ay, nagwo-work pala o hindi pala. And this is what many of us are missing. We are missing the chance to see God at work because we never leave Him alone doing His work in our lives. Yung sarili nating will, pinipilit natin knowingly. Most of the time, it's knowingly. Bihira naman yung tao, ay, hindi ko alam na masama pala yung ginawa ko. Bihira yun. Kadalasan, alam natin yun mali. Pero ginagawa pa rin natin. Sasabihin kasi natin, eh, kung hindi ko naman ginawa, paano naman, eh, di magiging pangit ang result. Hindi natin nabibigyan ng chance. So, operate according to God's will. Many people like to experiment. Lalo yung mga young people, they like to experiment. I suggest that you experiment obeying God. And you will see the result. Experiment obeying God. Sa, alam natin yan sa utak eh. Be humble. Pero humble ba talaga tayo pag meron tayong kaharap? Pag nachachallenge na yung ego natin? Nahagiging humble pa rin ba tayo? Oh, we take over. Lord, hindi. This is my fight. Hindi ito pwedeng godly-godly style eh. Kailangan yung style ko. So, we prevail. But do yourself a favor. In one, at least one area of your life where you are struggling with God and of course when you struggle with God, you win. Yung itayong nasusunod. Experiment nyo, mga kapatid. Sundin nyo ang Diyos. Give Him a chance to prove Himself so that your faith will grow. You will see that it works. And then ask for more faith. What else can I say? Nothing more. Kung tanong ninyo sa sarili nyo yung ganyang tanong, why couldn't I? But di ko magawa? Ba't di ko matalikuran itong aking unholy relationship? 
bakit hindi ko maibitaw-bitawan itong aking bisyo? Bakit hindi ko matalito-likuran itong aking masamang ugali? Bakit hindi ko matalo-talo ang aking pride? Bakit hindi ko matalo-talo yung fear ko sa kung ano-ano? Ganon din yung tanong, why couldn't we? And the answer is, because you have very little faith. Exercise that faith. It will grow. Parang muscle. Maliit lang, pero pag ina-exercise mo, lumalaki. Kasi na-exercise siya. So, let God have His way. He will definitely prove Himself. Let's spend some time in prayer. Saan larangan kaya ng buhay tayo parang powerless or ineffective? Saan? Sa ating thought life? Sa ating private, secret life? Sa mga ipinapagawa ni Lord? Whatever it is. There is power available to us. We can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. We can even drive out demons in the name of the Lord. But do we? Are we able? So let's ask the Holy Spirit to search into our hearts. And if you know in your heart that there are many areas or some areas in our lives where we cannot behave like winners, like victorious people, the way God's people should be, Ask God for more faith. Our faith can move mountains. Silently, allow the Holy Spirit to minister unto us. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are powerful. Sinabi ng anak niyong si Jesus, Greater things than this you will do. So we know, O Lord, that Christians can do many great things. And as we look into our lives, Father, you will probably see that there are so many great things that we can do that we do not and cannot do. Teach us, O Lord, to obey. Teach us to believe. And give us more faith. Faith that doesn't only see us through day to day, but faith that moves mountains. Faith, O Lord, that can inspire us to greater ambition in your name. Faith that can inspire us to great activities that can change the systems that we live in. Lord, we believe that you are a God who would like to change the way men live. But unless we believe that that can be done, unless we subscribe to your ways, unless we behave triumphantly and victoriously as the church would be behaving, we know, Father, it cannot happen. So we pray that it begins in our hearts, that it begins in our inmost being, that we believe your every word, that we believe to the point of committing our lives, our well-being, our resources, our energies in the practice of that belief. Add our faith, O Father. Add to our faith and move in us and through us. I pray for victory for each one here. Sa mga personal lives, O Lord, mga struggles na lumang-luma na, paulit-ulit na lang, recycle ng recycle ng mga struggles. Lord, we know that you can win over these struggles. We know that we can win in your name and in your power. And yet many of us choose not to win. That's why we lose. Teach us, O oh Lord. Continue to open our eyes to see that in most of our failures, we only have ourselves to blame. Because we choose to live below the level that you have designed us to live. Because we choose to abdicate the throne and seat of power that you would like us to have. And because, O oh Lord, we default on the privileges that you give us as children. And we choose to live, O oh Lord, as if we were worldlings. Father, teach us. Should there be people around here to whose lives this message is not relevant, we thank you, Lord, because probably that person is living in victory. 
If there is such a person, O Lord, teach us to learn from him or her. But above all, we want to learn from you. Every day, O God, give us the wisdom to practice our faith, to put our complete trust and confidence in you, especially when it goes against our own personal wisdom. We thank you for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name.